we are uh, just going online now. We're going to do another uh, little sketch stream. Just going to get some music playing for myself in the background. You guys won't be able to hear it because I have my computer muted on the stream. Unfortunately, I can't give you background music, otherwise all of my VODs and stuff would get muted and that would not be cool. Um, Yes, uh, hello and welcome everyone, uh, if anyone is here, not here yet, but uh, should be folks coming soon. Uh, we are, we are doing, we are doing the stream times, we're, we're doing some stuff. Um, all right. You know what? Never, never mind. I'm not gonna play a video in the background. I'd like my, I'd like to keep my uh, stream from buffering too much. So, uh, as you can see, I have brought up a blank uh, document here. Once again, I am using Photoshop uh, CS6, which is the uh, subscription version. Uh, it's about 10 bucks, 11 bucks a month uh, if you get it on sale. Um, and that adds up quite a lot over the course of a year, uh, but um, it's a great program. And uh, this is not an advertisement for them, by the way. It's just some people have asked what I use, and uh, that's what I'm on. Uh, I am thinking of uh, switching over to a uh, a different um, a different thing uh, eventually, but uh, I've heard good things about Krita. That's K R I T A. I'll spell it out for you. But um, I don't want know much about it. Um, beyond that it exists and apparently has some pretty good brush tools and things built in and is free. Um, it's donationware, basically. Uh, they have a free version and they also have a version that you can pay for on Steam if you'd like to support them directly. Uh, again, that's not ad that's not necessarily advertising. I'm not being I'm not being uh, reimbursed or anything for this. Uh, I'm just letting you guys know what sort of I'm thinking about because that's kind of where I'm at. Um, so yes, uh, so this is Photoshop CS6, and I'm still figuring out what on earth I'd like to draw today. I think we're going to do something different. We're going to go back to Saturn, but I think we're going to do something in the cloud tops this time. That's my thinking. So we're going to fill this background with our sky blue, our dark sky blue. And we're going to grab our light sort of cloud-ish color. And what we're going to do is fill in very, very gently from the bottom. Getting gradually less and less and less as we go up. We're going to grab uh, one of these intermediary colors and uh, start blending that out as well. One thing that uh, sort of uh, sort of a Bob Ross trick is to start making these little X shapes with your brush instead of going back and forth smoothly like I was doing there. Um, that will help to sort of randomize uh, what you're seeing, especially if you start grabbing those intermediary colors, like I said, and keep repeating that process all the way up. It gives a nice kind of 
texture to your background. It's very subtle, very subtle, hard to notice, but uh, it's definitely there, and your eye definitely picks it up. And I'm just letting the pressure on my tablet uh, vary with each stroke, so we get some mixes of uh, opacities and things like that. And and just sort of X shapes, grabbing some intermediaries here and doing the same thing. Let me uh stylus tilt so that tilts the uh, shape of the brush that Photoshop is rendering. Uh, get sort of a wider and flatter in some directions. Once again, grabbing some intermediary colors, moving them down. Little X shapes, crisscross strokes with the brush, very, very gently. And that, see, blends out some of those harsh lines that we had before. And now it looks a bit more presentable as a uh, sky um, and a very painterly sky as well it's not just a, I could have just drawn a gradient between these two colors but I decided to do it this way because it gives it a more freehand look hello Cassandra welcome to the chat hi <laughs> um, Yes, uh, so so uh, that is that is what we're doing here I uh, I decided that we're gonna go back to Saturn tonight. Because uh, Saturn is, as we both know, the best planet. And I also wanted to draw some clouds. So what we're going to do here is we're going to draw a Saturn sunset. And we're going to have some clouds and things. And we're going to have an airship moving off in the distance. And way, way out on the horizon, we're going to have just the hint of Saturn's rings climbing out of the horizon and arcing overhead uh, as they're lit by the sunset rays um, and just barely catch the shadow of of of, uh, of Saturn as it passes behind. I think it'll be very pretty. That's what I'm going for tonight. And also I love I love clouds. And I know you like clouds and this picture is for you. I like drawing pictures for you. It makes me really happy. It's uh, it's always nice to have an audience, <laughs> like uh, someone you're you're making stuff for. For some people, that can be distracting, but for me, I, it's something I can I find I take a lot of joy in doing that. All right, so we're gonna save. as a PSD. And yeah, doesn't it? I think it sounds really pretty. I'm uh, I'm really I'm really looking forward to it. So what I'm going to do here is actually since we have our sort of light rose pink color First things first, I'm gonna move it from one uh, thing to the other, so I don't lose it. Cause I, uh, I'm quite fond of this pink color. Um, I basically just slapped it down and used the paint dropper tool to pick it up again uh, once I switched my foreground color to my background color, and I'll keep it just in the background because I like to use that particular color. Um, a lot on uh, on different stuff. These two are slightly different, and I'm not sure which one is which. Well, we're gonna save this one actually. We're just going to add this to my swatches. 
That way I don't have to worry about keeping it in the, in the background. Uh, Photoshop lets you save um, colors uh, to your um, to a swatches palette uh, where you can just sort of grab the standard library of colors and it'll let you switch between which set of colors you're using and it lets you add your own custom colors and that's what I did just there because I use this pink color a lot so I want to be able to come back to it um, anyway I'm done rambling about that we'll grab our cloud blue again and put that in the background um, so now we're working with this very bright off-white sort of pinkish color and I've got my brush at kind of a medium-ish size. We're going to start making some clouds. I'm using pink for the clouds because this is sunset and we want the tops of some of these clouds to be catching the light. And I'm sort of adding definition to the clouds by letting them kind of fade toward a blue as they go down and back. and making my brush pressure just a little bit more as they come up. Not actually happy with what I just did there. So I'm going to use my history brush tool. I've slapped my history brush source onto um, the step where I saved this picture because I like the background at that step. Uh, and so I'm just going to grab that history fixing brush, which just restores wherever you paint to um, the state it was at. Oops, that's my eraser. It restores whatever you paint to the state it was in um, uh, when you were at the source step that you define uh, in the history brush. Uh, on your history tab, and I just come right in. Basically, it's like it's like erasing, but um, slightly different because it uh, it doesn't knock out the background to just pure white or transparent. It uh, restores it to what it looked like on a previous step. So now we're gonna grab this. Uh, I just wasn't happy with the shape those clouds were taking in particular. If I get nice and dark down there. Okay, up here. Something I like to do with clouds is I like to, like I'm doing a lot of squiggles and stuff like that, but I'm also like kind of maintaining a general sense of like flow. Because all clouds are in the sky, uh, they trace currents of air in just the same way that clouds in your coffee trace uh, the flow of liquid and fluid in your coffee cup. So you make a lot of sort of swirling patterns in the, uh, it's sort of imitating the direction of the flow of air as you as you work. I'm getting some of these get a little bit darker as we move back and down. Darker, 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 darker still. And I'm mostly, you know, with the exception of where I started out, I'm mostly doing this without lifting my stylus up. That keeps it sort of allows it to sort of blend smoothly into one another. You can always come back and do more if you want to, but it's uh, it's a little bit difficult sometimes to get it to match right, but uh, with a little work uh, and liberal application of uh, the uh, grabbing tool, the color dropper tool, you can uh, you can make things match up eventually. This is going to define sort of our, it's kind of in the foreground here. 
let these be a little bit more ragged on this side so that we can see a cloud bank behind them. That one we're going to get a little bit more uh, dicey with. I really should have started from the back and worked forward, like Bob Ross tells you to, but uh, I am not Bob Ross. So you get this instead. <laughs> That said, what we're going to do is we're going to grab this dark color here, and we're actually going to come back in over some of these and start adding little hints of shading and so on, and hints of like uh, clouds kind of behind these. I'm going to look through these colors here and I'm going to figure out which one I want to be my highlight for the next row back. Uh, and I think it's not going to be the full strength color, it'll be probably one of these intermediary shades. Uh, I want it to be pretty close though, so I think it's going to be this one. And I'll start maybe over here. And start working down. And we're actually going to let it fade pretty much into that black color here as we come in behind where these, uh, especially where this one passes in front of it. So I'm just going to let that ride as a shadow behind these guys. We're not really going to let them get too much in the way of highlight until they suddenly ascend above the shadow being cast by the cloud bank back here. And then we'll let this one get darker again as it sort of moves behind this other cloud bank. You see that? Nearly, nearly dark. And then suddenly. Much brighter here, and a little bit here. Um, and we're going to let this one descend into go back. Next step, I'm going to do this for sort of repeat the process. Grab this dark color here and blend it in a little more and even. That gives the impression that there's like these uh, shadows being cast by the clouds in front, 
without us do, having to do a whole lot of extra work. We're just going to add a little bit of wispiness to some of these as well. that I'm actually going to grab, I'm going to change my brush opacity to like 20% or something like that to make these wispy parts a little bit more um, subtle. I'm not super happy actually with the wispy bits, but uh, that's okay. And now I've run into a dilemma, see, because I like where this is going, but we don't have enough of a um, we don't have enough at the top to uh, it's not tall enough to uh, give the impression of uh, the horizon. And everything we've run out of room. So rather than coming in and correcting it all. What I'm going to do is cheat. So we're going to go image and we're going to go to canvas size. And right now I have a width and height of 1000 pixels. I'm going to make my height, let's call it 1500 pixels, give it an extra third. We're going to anchor this canvas extension at the bottom so that way it just gives us extra space at the top. And our canvas extension color um, we're gonna grab our dark sky color. So we go image, canvas size, anchor at the bottom. Two thousand pixels that'll or sorry. 1,500 pixels and for our canvas extension color we're going to choose foreground color which is that dark blue that we just selected and boom you could almost not even tell the difference and all I'm going to do is grab uh, the if I, if I squint, I can kind of pick up where the light colors I was working with for the um, gradient part of this were still. And I'll just lift that up into the sky a little bit. Give those great little X uh, cross, crisscross um, things. And I forgot that I was on 20% uh, opacity. That's all right. That's all right. That is okay. And so basically, we're just repeating the process that we went through at the beginning of the uh, drawing, but just kind of using, starting with a slightly darker color instead of the light, light, light foreground background. Now we've restored our sky texture somewhat. Okay. Right. 
So I'm arbitrarily sort of deciding that our horizon line is going to be um, sort of here. Um, with things, you know, they can uh, go above it slightly and whatever, but that's going to be our horizon line. Um, so I'm going to start moving these back even more. And I'm actually going to start changing these to the cooler color, which is what I normally use for like white puffy clouds. Start moving these back even, even more. Not happy with those. Great thing about working on a computer is there's always an undo button. Always an undo button. I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller because these guys are going to be um, further away. The details in them are not going to be nearly as prominent. Except on this guy here, we're going to make a nice big thunderhead kind of thing rising up. The cool thing about Saturn is that, like, thunderheads and things here. Uh, I like the size of whole cities uh, on Earth. Just a, just an individual thunderstorm cell, and that's a, and that's that'd be an average storm. That'd be a pretty you wouldn't you wouldn't sort of glance at that storm again. You wouldn't think much of it. And you might be asking, if this is a sunset, why are my warmer colors down near the bottom? And the answer is we're actually looking away from the direction of the sun. Um, and as the sun sets, the sort of reddish sunset color that we're all used to um, is cast across the ground. And uh, it actually gets somewhat darker. Um, higher up uh, because as the sun sets below the horizon the shadow of the earth comes up and starts to move across the sky and of course the shadow of the earth is night um, so uh, things get sort of reddish looking top down at first but then they very quickly become darker and the darkness approaches from the upper part of the horizon toward you. I'm going to let these kind of fade out. Just a little jiggly jagglies. Jiggly jaggly. Remember, our horizon line is right about here where I'm doing these. So I've got to kind of start working these down a bit further. Start pushing them into the background more. Back here, we're just going to start seeing kind of the, the tips of some clouds, like waves in the ocean, are going to be kind of lit up in different places. Uh, but for the most part, it's going to start fading into this kind of bluish, whitish expanse. I'm going to drop my opacity down and just kind of wash over these very, very lightly. Just 
brighten them ever so slightly up at the top to give the impression of things kind of uh, smoothing out into the background. Now I'm going to grab this dark sky color again and I'm going to start casting some shadows from these guys, especially these, these, big, these big thunderstorms. Going back into the horizon like that. I'm going to bump our opacity up to 50 so it can make these a bit more. There we go. There we go. Hello. Hello, yes. Yes, I've been waiting for you. These little streaks. There's a there's a technical term for them, because of course there is, and I've forgotten what that term is. Uh, it exists. I just am a rays of Venus, maybe, or something like that. No, the 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 belt of Venus is the color in the sky opposite a uh, opposite a uh, a what's it? <sighs> okay, we're gonna grab our rosy color again. And because I want sort of the impression of something really, really close to the foreground, um, kind of knock out some of this area here. And we're going to come in, and this will we'll lose some of our detail in here, but I think the sacrifice will be worth it because we'll be making a little. something here to give us a sense of scale to compare to the uh, little kajiggers in the background and uh, we'll have our little rocket ship or uh, airship that we, when we get there, we'll have it kind of floating behind this guy. Um, I'm going to grab that dark blue color again, drop our opacity down to 50 once more, and I'm going to start casting shadows from these clouds into the background. back that up a bit. Not quite happy with particularly that spot up there. But kind of got the idea now. And now we'll uh, sort of bring these back in. And that's given these a little bit of depth by using a slightly darker color on them to form shadows. A lot of just one of the reasons I find clouds so relaxing is there's a lot of just like going back and forth and back and forth over and over and over the same sort of things. Okay, now we'll grab our rose again, and 
I'm going to do is two things. First, we're going to push this even more towards white. So brightness is all the way up. Saturation will push us a little bit more towards white. Hue even we can push this way. Just drag that along the top. Not quite pure white, but very close. Just off white on the pinkish end of things. Just to give a little bit more highlight to the things that are like right out in front. And like especially here on the top. Again, just sort of defining that this is in the foreground here. Grab our normal rose color again and sort of work back in and around and behind and between things to kind of flesh them out, make them look a bit more obviously rounded. Now we're going to grab a just a plain old red, maybe even a dark red color, sort of a crimson or burgundy. We're going to make our brush nice and big. We're going to drop our opacity down to 20, maybe even 10%. Right? And we're going to start moving that intense red color into the shadowy areas. Here, and especially here. Maybe even we'll just grab that intense, like fire engine red, and start pushing that in here. Oh yeah, that's blending much nicer. Put that up to twenty percent. I think we can go. We can be bold with that. I actually don't know if I like it. Let's grab this intermediary color and cover up what we've just done. And back off uh, and redo some of these areas in the color that we just made and mixed and grabbed. Whoop. Very subtle. We'll go 50% there. I might actually kind of see something happening here. Now we'll go back 100% and we'll grab some of these intermediates uh, where we've blended and mixed things together. And at 100% opacity, that will make them uh, contrast each other a little bit more strongly, even though we're still using very gentle brush strokes and such to. Uh, things kind of moving along. And we're going to start using the same color now on the tops of these thunderheads way back in the distance. Getting even more sparse as we get further back. We'll let so this one speak to the shadow of being cast by this cloud, which we're going to pretend is itself part of a larger thunder system. So this cloud here is sort of casting this shadow here, 
and all of these other clouds are sort of behind it. Um, Come back up here, and we're gonna some of this reddish color. Start pulling in that belt of Venus that I was talking about. I'm just blending it together to get the right color right now. All right. There we go. There we go. The belt of Venus again, once again, is just that um, sort of brighter region above the horizon advancing ahead of um, ahead of nightfall. So believe it or not, the the sky is sort of Unusually, for any other time of the day, the, generally speaking, when you're painting a sky, um, your brightest parts of the sky are actually going to be down near the horizon. But at nightfall, the brightest parts are um, no longer at that part of the sky. They're more like... Uh, down even uh, they're more um, the brighter parts are at that sort of right by the position of the Sun and then exactly opposite in a band around the horizon and moving up slowly as nightfall approaches and I think That looks good. Just a hint of that reddish color pulling up through the sky above. Um, now, I'll grab this color here and start painting that into these cloud tops again. Let's just particular attention to the ones that are like highest in the sky. Let it get darker as it moves back and down. Same principles as before. Same principles as before. And again, just a few of these, like little white caps. And smaller and farther up, the farther back into the background. Cool. Alright, I like where this is going so far. So now we're going to start working on details. Um, I'm going to come back in here and grab some of these uh, sky colors, cloud colors, work in these details again. You'll notice that um, you get some sharp lines sometimes when you bring in these colors, and sometimes sort of clouds are a bit more gradiented and uh, things and that's good that's what we want we want uh, some places to be sharply defined and some places to be a bit more uh, fluid clouds are very um, very very uh, different from each other in that way um, and the sharp lines help to add contrast to things, push colors and shapes around to find shadows and whatnot. So you'll see me like coming back in to places where I've already colored, grabbing some of the colors that are there, pushing them in places that those colors weren't before. 
um, and just moving stuff, moving stuff, moving stuff, moving stuff confidently. Grabbing it, moving it around, grabbing it, moving it around. Even coming in, sort of making little islands of darkness. Little island, little islands of darkness sounds like uh, it's like sounds like an interesting band. <laughs> Doesn't it? All right. All right. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, we want to have a little airship, rocket ship thing in here. So I'm going to grab, not black and not blue, we'll grab this dark color right here that's mixed with the red and stuff down here, Maybe even there, or there. That's good. I'll grab that and I'm just going to make it more saturated and darker and more saturated again and darker. Now we've got a color that looks something like this, which up in the sky doesn't make much sense, but if we put that with our smallest brush setting and we'll zoom in to like 100% and see, we've got lots of room down here still for stuff. Oh gosh, I've been neglecting the bottom half of this painting. But I kind of like it. <laughs> Tell you what, I kind of like it. Like that. Um, we're going to leave it kind of like that for now, I think. Uh, We're going to set our history brush to here now, and I'm going to save. Um, I'm actually, I said I was going to leave it there, and I lied. I'm actually going to bring some of this foreground uh, stuff into, not like hugely into here, but sort of be like yeah yeah this is this is totally kind of invading and drifting across here one weather system. Good. I think.
Photoshop luckily has a thing that lets you like um, save that, that that it remembers it tracks like the colors that you've used recently. So that dark, nice dark color that I found is not lost. It's just uh, it's just hiding back here. Okay. Looking at this zoomed out even further, quite happy with how that looks. So we're going to save again, grab our history brush, and set that to the current step. Uh, and now. We're going to look back in our uh, palette history and find that nice dark purple color, this color. Hi. It's very purple. Um, and what I'm going to do is have... Put up in here. I'm going to make our brush very, very small. I'm going to have tiny little shape kind of peeking out from behind. And we're going to make sure this is nice and like defined with sharp edges so that even super duper tiny like this, no one's going to think it's a cloud. Like even at half opacity, that's still pretty clearly like, oh yeah, there's a thing here. Um, not sure I like it though. Grab our history brush, knock that out. Go back to our paintbrush again. Let's think about where we want this thing to be coming out from or from behind. I think maybe. So I want to have another one like here and a bit more in the foreground, just catching the light as it comes out of the shadow. But, um, might be a little hard to communicate. What I'm going to do is, uh, we're going to make this one smaller. So it's like really clearly behind, way behind here. Just have it poking out. behind this cloud. And intersecting with the one that's behind it, so it clearly sort of places it in between the two. And we're going to draw like little gondolas and stuff underneath, sort of suggest, oh yeah, this is a this is a, some sort of vehicle, right? Tiny little ropes and such like. Other details and, and whatnot. Like, these details that I'm drawing in are not even functional. I've not designed this ship that we're looking at here. I just know I want it to look like, okay, this thing, this, here's a thing, it's got some greeblies on it. It's clearly some sort of aerodynamic vessel, maybe some sort of pressure vessel. It's rounded, but the details are not actually important at this point. What I'm going to do later is bring in some like white and bright red little dots to be like lights on this thing um, so that it catches our attention, but uh, for right now it's just this little silhouette. All right, so that's there, and that's tiny. And what I'm going to do here is actually um, make it make another one. 
maybe sort of over in this direction, I think. We need we need something going on over here. And I'm gonna have this one pass coming out from behind this layer of cloud. And be much bigger. And we'll have our little pods and things here, and they'll be somewhat larger this time. A little bit closer to the thing because this is more in the foreground and a little bit below us. Um, and this shadow cast by this cloud here is going to end right about here on the thing. And this part will be like suddenly flashing into sunlight here. Uh, and of course this entire bit will be in shadow basically. Um, so grab that there. We'll color in the sort of what's it here. Especially down that way. brush and uh, there. Perfect. Uh, so here we're going to get really intense. We're going to draw, um, we're going to use a uh, bright orange yellow uh, here on this to be sort of representative of background color of the sunlight. We're going to grab our um, the darker color here from the shadow of the clouds and use that as a thing on the bottom, particularly right there, and our even darker sort of like Core shadow is going to be that. Uh, what's it there? And we're going to get a sort of streak of reddish color right there. Yellow back in top and the red back again. Now we're going to grab bright yellow. And that's the sun. 
being reflected in this thing down here. And then we're going to grab white. This thing kind of reflected. Grab our darker color and bring that in closer. So it's even more like, wow, sun glint. And let me come back in with the bright yellow. And the white. I'm using the shift key now to make a perfectly vertical, like, uh, line. It's the glint. Cool. So we've got our little our little thingies behind the clouds and suddenly wow. Uh bright bright shiny. The shift, holding the shift tool just makes you draw in a straight line um, while continuing to allow you to make it uh, more and less opaque. Now, as I promised, I'm going to take uh, our bright red and white. We're going to zoom way in, make our brush exceptionally tiny, and just do um, some running lights on this guy here. Red, uh, I'm going to grab bright green actually, I'm going to make this the port side. Grab bright red again, so sort of imply that it's behind that, bright green. Over here, and some white lights, uh, just like little dots, little warning lights that would be on aircraft and such. Maybe one or two even uh, here. We'll put those same patterns in uh, on this guy here. Bright green. Bright green. Just a little bit better spatial resolution here on this one. There we go. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to save this as um, a 
separate uh, file. I'm going to call it stream B. It's the same picture, but it's a different version. Because I'm not going to do anything more of the clouds on this. Um, what I am going to do, I'm going to make a layer. Um, now we're going to draw in the piece de la resistance of this little uh, drawing here. So you remember um, earlier this week we did a drawing of Saturn with some rings. I'm going to grab the color of those rings from that picture. So I'm going to navigate to this drawing here. Yeah, sure, that's fine. Um, this is just going to go away uh, in a second. I'm just using it to grab the correct color. Now that can go away. And once again, with this very, very, very tiny brush, we're going to make it slightly bigger to start out with. Maybe like three pixels, two pixels across. I'm picking this part of our um, horizon here. And. almost straight up. We're going to draw a very, very thin line going almost straight up into the sky. Not even quite thin enough. Not even quite uh, pale enough either. Hmm. Yeah, I don't like that. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this color of the uh, the pale, off-white, rose-ish thing here. And we're going to start with holding shift um, and just draw very, very thin and make it a brush even thinner. Very thin little line going up going down not touching the horizon just coming very very close going all the way up and getting brighter as it goes up Because I'm doing this on a new layer, I can even uh, make some adjustments in a minute by using the uh, eraser tool. Make that sort of more of a curve. I'm going to make my brush even bigger now, slightly. Once again, I'm just going to come back in and make it more of a curve again. What I'm drawing here, in fact, are the rings, which will be very, very thin whenever you're anywhere near the equator. Uh, in fact, once you get to the equator of Saturn, it would be almost invisible. Uh, so, so like light and thin and straight up and down that you wouldn't really even be able to see it, except as like backscattering. So this implies that we are um, not, in fact, on the equator. We're just slightly uh, north or south of it, depending on what season this is.
and the rings, in fact, are passing into shadow as well as nighttime approaches. Because the shadow of Saturn is cast all the way out into space. And so I quite like that. I think that's really good. Um, I'm going to save this. I'm just going to come back in, zoom in, and sort of inspect what we've made with the rings up here. Uh, Oh, cancel, cancel, cancel. That's not what I want to do. Sorry, uh, Photoshop just made me almost like uh, start bringing in a uh, a guide, and I'm like, I don't, I don't need to add any rulers to this. Please, thank you. What I'm actually even going to do is uh, draw. Uh, some of these. I'm going to draw in the uh, one of the little gaps in the rings. Come back in with our eraser, very very tiny now. Start sculpting these a little bit more. I'm not actually very good at drawing curves, so I usually have to come back in and uh, and reshape them somewhat. Now we're going to make our eraser really, really tiny. Even smaller than it was already. There we have it. The rings getting caught in the shadow of the planet itself. Uh, and actually, this inner ring. Uh, should come down even further. Get even closer to the other one. Oh well. Oh well. There we go. Makes it almost imperceptibly thin right there. Cool. And just for good measure, we'll throw in one of these Saturnian moons in the same color. Let's pretend it's uh, Titan or Rhea or something way out there.
waxing. There we go. I'm happy with it. What do you think? You like it? I'm going to put my signature here. Actually, I'm even going to make that smaller. It'll be nearly illegible, but I don't care. Don't care. I like it. I think I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to call it done right there. So we're going to save. And we're going to save as a PNG. looks nice thank you I I'm quite happy with it now I am uh, I'm going to go ahead and oh bother oh bother I did not mean to say that as a PNG uh, we have to flatten it before we save it as a PNG image layer flatten image discard hidden yes now we save as PNG. PNG. Oh, replace. Okay. Delete that uh, reference image so I don't bloat my uh, file up. Yes, I'll replace that one. Now, what I'm going to do. Uh, I want two versions of this picture, like I said. My history brush is still on the step uh, right before I drew in these um, uh, airships. So I can just take my history brush and go, bump, bump, and they're gone. But I kept my uh, rings and moon in the sky like that. So now. You really like the pink, yeah. I think it look. I think the pink is nice. I'm glad I decided to do the pink with this. I think it looks really good. It looks really god, really god, guys. All right. Now we save this as the original, just stream with no B. Save it. Overwrite it. Yes. Now we flatten this one. I'll save as PNG. Bam. Okay. So, uh, that's it for the stream tonight. Um, thank you all for coming by. I had a lot of fun. I hope you. Uh, I hope you did too. Um, and if you're watching uh, in the future, I hope you do as well. For the benefit of anyone who may be lurking or uh, watching on the VOD, seeing the chat replay, or uh, watching uh, on YouTube and seeing it come up on the screen, I'm going to put in my um, 
my uh, Twitter, which is twitter.com slash v underscore adrift. Uh, you can find updates and stuff from me, um, usually cross postings from other social media that I have. Uh, I have an Instagram as well, which is instagram.com slash is it user or people? Oh, I don't remember. It's linked below the video or in my header on YouTube. Um, in uh, in my info bars and stuff on Twitch, my header on YouTube. Uh, so is my Tumblr, but I know that uh, address by heart. It's cute spaceships dot tumblr dot com. And the direct link to my art tag is slash art, where you can see other stuff that I've made. Um, my Tumblr also has links on its header to uh, things that I've made, things that I've written, and my commissions uh, information. All of that stuff is linked below my videos as well. Um, and uh, feel free to follow me uh, on any of my social media accounts. Um, I may not follow you back just because I, I uh, follow lots of people already and you can get kind of overwhelmed by uh what I see. But yes, uh thanks for this thanks for the stream. Uh thanks for you being here watching the stream and uh Cassandra especially thank you for uh being someone I can paint for. Um cheers. Have a good night. Bye folks.